it's it's very peaceful. It's um, it's a wonderful place to live. You could be who you want to be. Uh, you could be yourself. Um, it's a nice small town um, community. Everybody's friendly. A lot of people, most people know each other. Um, I'd like to live here for life. My great grandfather, Bereshi, my maternal grandmother's father, when they immigrated here, they started working the cane fields. That's what they came. You got to understand, this was right after the Civil War. This was right after the freed slaves. They needed cheap labor because most of the slaves were hidden off. So the Sicilian immigrants got here and they took the place of the, the farmhands, you know. And most of them were, that came into the New Orleans, port of New Orleans wound up in the, in the cane fields uh, of South Louisiana. And then little by little, as they saved their money, they would buy a piece of property and open a grocery store mainly, or uh, as would happen in Independence, if they were welcomed into an area, and Independence was trying to grow, as from what I understand, it was established by the railroad, and they were trying to establish a community here. So they would sell the land to an Italian. Well, Joe, Joe, you know, Joe's brother would hear about it, and he could buy land over here, so he'd come buy a little piece of land. And that's how the Italian community started. As they came to the United States, as they came into New Orleans, if they didn't have a, a job or a teacher or, or accounting or, or some kind of craft, uh, they went straight to the cane fields and it was just hard labor. And from there they saved their money and migrated. And when someone from the group migrated this way and found that land was cheap and affordable, of, of guess, and they had saved enough money and it was farmable. And they knew that strawberries were raised. Well, they all came from farming background. When they came, they mostly worked in the lower parishes, like Thibodeau, down in that, in that part of uh, Louisiana. But then they found out about independence and about all the great farming that they had up here. With the, they were raising strawberries and, and peppers. And so quite a number of my family moved here to this town, to independence. It was a village at first little place they called Uncle Sam. First it was, they called it a Little Italy, and then they called it Uncle Sam, and then it became Independence. Uh, the early migration, uh, immigration was around 19, late 1800s, so like 1880, 1890, and then it, it, uh, it peaked around 1900 to 1910 and 1920. It, it really got the population very large. It kind of double, triple overnight, it looks like. And they had a drought in Sicily, and the farm that people were starving over there, they didn't have no food. The crops were all gone. So my dad told them, let's pack up, and we'll go to America, where they have a lot of food. Food, you know, we do better if we go to America. So they all came on over. My dad and all his brothers and sisters, they all came. In-laws, they all came. My grandfather's uh, big thing, he said in Sicily, when they left, they said uh, inflation was so bad, they'd take a wheelbarrow of money buy your groceries, you know, a small amount of groceries. And uh, monetary wealth wasn't his big deal, from what I gathered. It was that every day you could go and eat. And we proved it, we all got big. You know, <laughs> strawberries was the main crop. Then they raised peppers, cucumbers, squash, corn, you name it. Anything in the farm product, they could raise it and they'd sell it. They'd sell it. Uh, they'd ship big supplies of it because they couldn't sell it. They didn't have no farmer's market here. So they had to sell it to private people if they wanted to come over there and buy some. They loaded strawberries on the train and they shipped those out to Chicago and New York, but they had to put ice in the cars to keep the berries cool. The berries rot quick. They do. How would you describe uh, independence while you, were, while you were growing up? Well, I liked it. We had, we had a good school. We had good school teachers. Uh, people in town was good. Treated, you know, they, you, you walk in the sidewalk, everybody talked to you and all that. 
uh, needed something from the drugstore. We had ice cream there things like that. When the bell rang school, which was right across the track, we'd all go get an ice cream or something from, from the drugstore. We have, uh, and of course, St. Joseph is a big thing around here, too. Uh, How do you all celebrate that? Well, it's a Catholic celebration, and um, so uh, sometimes, uh, well, most of the time, the, the church has, uh, they call it a procession, and uh, with the St. Joseph statue, and they'll walk, they'll walk the streets and say the rosary. Um, and we also have the St. Joseph altars, which is abundant in food, and um, someone is appointed to represent a saint, and they sit at a table and eat, and uh, it's just a very old tradition. My daddy is 93. He had a, his, his uncle and uh, his double first cousin of 10 years older than he was. Uh, when they were going to high school, uh, the ratio of the Sicilian to the non-Italians, you know, that wasn't there, it was heavy on the non-Italian, you know, the, the ratio, the percentage wise. Well, they wouldn't let him use the bathroom inside facilities. They had to go across the street and go in the woods, okay? Until Dr. Pugh, he became principal in the He said, no, we will cut that out. He said, everybody use the inside facilities. You know, you're not going to discriminate against things like that. He was ahead of his time on that part, you know. So they would discriminate with some things. But, I mean, it was as part of, of being American, I think. <laughs> you got to make your way. Uh, Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you an For instance, when I was at OSU, I used to hitchhike back and forth, which was no big deal in those days. Uh, and I would hitchhike from Baton Rouge to the corner of uh, 190 and 51, which is where the high hole was, high hole barbecue. And I would go in, I'd have a barbecue and a Coke, and then I'd get on Highway 51 and hitchhike the rest of the way home. So one day I ran into a friend of mine at the high hole and he asked me what my plans were that afternoon and I said, well, I don't really have any. He said, do you want to play golf? I said, yeah, sure, where do you want to play? He said, oh, no, that's the country club here in Hammond. I said, well, I can't play in Oak No. He said, yeah, yeah, you can. They changed the rules. He said, Italians can't be members, but they can be guests. So needless to say, I won't repeat what I told him to do with the golf course. <laughs> So I've seen some of the discrimination myself, so I can just imagine how bad it was for my great-grandfather. My grandparents, they knew little words in Sicilian, but they were forbidden to speak it because there was a lot of uh, discrimination and um, a lot of mistreatment back then, um, the 20s and 30s especially and before. Um, and my dad worked for the phone company, um, and he worked in businesses and homes and all over. Uh, and he would talk to a lot of other people working in the community. And he said there were even places in Ponchatoula uh, in this parish who still wouldn't serve Italians in the 70s after the Civil Rights Act. Uh, it was pretty bad here for Italian, Sicilian Americans here with the discrimination and prejudice. And but as time passes on, they was catching on to the English language, and we were speaking back to them in English so they could understand us, and and they finally they broke in English, but they could, they could hold a conversation with us, and we could hold a conversation with them. We speak in English, they speak Italian. Then finally they start speaking a lot of words in English, my uncle's aunts and grand well, my grandfather and grandmother never did speak English. No, they they they, they stuck to the Italian. Then they died in 1931, 30, 1931 or so. They didn't have time to learn to speak English. But he could curse in, in English. <laughs> Do you still use any uh, Italian words today or Sicilian words today? I, I know a lot of Italian words. I could hold a conversation, but not as well as I could have five years ago, 
Ten years ago, I was good. Five years ago, I was bad. And now I'm getting worse. I, 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 Sometimes we talk Italian when we get together with the other Italian people at the high hole, you know, and talk. We get together three times a week over there, and it got a lot of Italian boys. But they're young, and they know a few words, but they don't even sound like Italian, and they put so much English behind it, you know. Yeah. And that's how you, if your grandparents didn't teach it to you, you wouldn't learn. My daddy could talk Italian. I say it Italian, but it wasn't. It was really Sicilian, because uh, I could remember asking him. They would have a program on TV, and they would be talking Italian. And I'd ask him. I said, "Daddy," I said, "What'd they say?" He said, "I don't know." I said, "What you mean? You know how to talk Italian?" He said, "I don't understand what they're saying, because it's different. The dialects and everything, it's different." Other than my daddy's generation, my cousins. Uh, one or two of them that they understand it and they speak a little bit of it, but nothing to have a conversation with. I don't think they, if there was in a, if someone was speaking, they would understand what they were talking about. Are there any Italian or Sicilian words that you will still use in normal conversation? Mm, no, no. Uh, very seldom. Maybe a while back, you know, might have used a cuss word or something, now, but we hardly ever use anything anymore. It's not used anymore. Only the bad words. No. I mean, everybody knows bed the madre because the beautiful That's... mother, because whenever the Italian women, and whenever they got upset, they go, oh, bed the madre. <laughs> yeah. You got to do you know that too. <laughs> and they said out a few choice words that I can't say. Um. My wife's cousin, he's passed away just the past year. He used to, he was in the festival a lot. And uh, he, used, he used to be able to talk Italian and everything. And they used to, he used to bring up things like, uh, how do you say refrigerate in Italian? He said, ice the box. <laughs> <laughs> when dad went over there during, during, uh, during leave, he, he was in Italy. And he was looking for a bathroom. So he was asking people, where was the Bacalza? Bacalza. Bacalza. Bacalza? Bacalza. Bacalza? <laughs> and so finally he had to do hand gestures to get the, the gentleman to understand that he needed to go use the bathroom. And I, I think they call it a part of that though or something like, anyway. <laughs> the reason why he was calling the Bacalza is because in those days they had a back house. Outhouses were called back houses. And so if you wanted to, they, they would just kept saying, oh, it's back house, back house, back house, back house. <laughs> they just put it onto one word. There is no back house. When you were in the service, where were the other guys in your unit from? Uh, uh, most of them were from the Northeast. A few from, uh, 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 a big number from uh, California. And uh, quite a few from uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, but the most of them were from the Northeast, all uh, uh, Yankees. Yeah. Uh, Did they comment on your voice? Did they comment on how you talked? Oh, yeah, yeah. They said, you know, the, the Italians mostly went to Ellis Island, got off over there, and they all speak that uh, Yankee language, you know. <laughs> I was the tired, I go there and I speak like a Southern, you know. I said, well, what's wrong with you? I said, why? I said, you speak like a Southern. Well, that's where I'm from. I'm from the South. I'm from uh, Independence. I said, look on the map, see where it is, right close to the Gulf. Yeah, I said, that, that's the difference. I said, there ain't no problem there. I said, you understand me? He said, yeah. I said, well, all right. Well, what's the, what's the problem? Then? It's your problem, not mine. I don't care. When you, were, when you were in the service, did anyone comment on how you spoke? Yes. What they said? Yeah, he said, he's a, what they call a swamp rat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they call it an answer. That's the truth. When I was in Psalm, they used to call me a swamp rat because we have a lot of swamps here, you know. I said, call me anything, boy, I don't care. 
I would have to uh, sometimes contact somebody out of state, you know, and they would say, you have a, you sure have a southern draw. And I said, what? He said, oh, you, you got a draw. I said, really? I said, I don't hear it until I heard my voice on the recorder at home. I had called my wife, left a message, and I heard it. I said, my goodness gracious. I said, that is terrible. <laughs> yeah. A couple of times I actually talked to other people um, who sounded like they were from New York, the New York area, and they said that I didn't have much of an accent to them, but it sounded a little Southern. But um, I, I attribute that to the Sicilian influence. Um, a lot of Italians moved there, and maybe that's what made the New York accent the New York accent. And the other big port of entry for Sicilians was New Orleans. And maybe that's why New Orleans and New York have similar okay. accents, um, except the New Orleans has more of the French and more of the Southern, mm -hmm. slower way of talking as opposed to yes. fast, <laughs> faster Northeastern. Um. Well, I've been up. Like when I was working for Allstate, I had to go up to, to Chicago for training up there. And uh, they could tell that I was from around here, from around New Orleans, especially where I would say New Orleans. <laughs> A little Southern accent in the words that are used, like reckon, ain't. Uh, no slang to say that, uh, to, to say that uh, the Italian uh, words in it or anything like that. That would I, very few people around here. You might find a few of the older people that are still living still have a little bit of it, but everybody else, every, just about everybody I went to school with moved away. Okay. If they raised on a farm, they wasn't going to farm. <laughs> they they wasn't going to farm, and most of the, and then as the farmers all died out, they they just they built homes and and did other things in their place. The four-legged animal that you would call a horse, okay. I grew up with as a horse. Oh, okay. And a lot of people around here say horse instead of horse. And I try to concentrate on saying horse when I'm out of town just so I don't have to explain the difference. Okay. The O pronunciation in Italian is not O, it's A. Oh, okay. So my Italian ancestors would say horse. That's the way we heard it. That's the way we said it. So does everybody around here sound about the same, or are there differences around here? Oh, they talk a little different, yeah. Each family talks a little different, and got a little different dialect, yeah. Uh, but mostly uh, 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 about the same. Uh, we all understand each other, whether you're white, black, brown, you know, uh, the only, only ones that are a little different are your Vietnamese or they, they got a different way of speaking. And the Mexicans got a little Latin, more Latin to them than we have, but they, they all speak good. Uh, New Orleans, New Orleans, if you take a person from Brooklyn and a person from New Orleans, they could talk because they understand each other. They talk the same way. New Orleans is not I mean, they, they don't use a southern accent at all. Now, you go maybe up in Mississippi and Alabama, and you can pick up on it pretty quick. Southern, southern talking is when you get up to the state line, you cross over Macomb over there, and you hear the, slang, the, the, tang, the twang in the name. We do have a southern accent, you know, and uh, I believe it's a lot of it, it comes from... Uh, different other nationalities in, in the area, you know, uh, you pick up different words from them, you know, the slang and, uh, no, we, <laughs> I don't hear it, but I know we do have a uh. The Mississippi Gulf Coast, they all speak sort of like New Orleans, sort of like the way we do here, but um, definitely North Louisiana, there's a, a difference, um, more like the country, southern, like um, Mississippi, and 
also especially um, cut off. Um, the Saints player Bobby Bear gets on the radio and he sounds very Cajun. Um, and um, everybody west of southwest Louisiana, um, Lafayette, they almost sound like they're speaking French when they speak English. It's pretty. Um, Golden Meadow people um, at the mouth of the river, they, they have that similar accent. Um, when you go to Memphis, can you hear the difference in the way they speak? I can. Or? I okay. can. It's not a big difference. Uh, actually, I can hear a difference, you know, in Baton Rouge people. And, of course, Mississippi is a big difference. Huh. What are the differences between here and Mississippi? Well, I think the twang is a little, you know, has a little more southern twang to it, you know. So... Of course, people around here have it, too. I don't think I do, but I probably do. <laughs> Since my child had graduated, uh, they're our youngest, um, I'm active with the Italian Cultural Museum in Independence, where we are right now. Um, and um, I was instrumental in finding Stephen Campo, who speaks Sicilian. And I just got confirmation from uh, the president of the, the museum board, Mr. Donnie Orlando, just this morning. Um, he okayed that uh, Stephen could come on Saturdays um, whenever he wants to, however, how often he wants to, to teach us Sicilian, to keep our culture alive. He'll be doing it right here. Yes, ma'am. Buena Sera, Buena Sera, Senorina. It's time to say goodnight to Napoli. Buena Sera, Buena Sera, Senorina. And I don't know, I can't remember the exact words. Something about the Mediterranean Sea. Well, the song we sang was Enza Luna, Enza Mari, Mamma Mia, the Maritari. I thought that's all I know. And don't ask me to translate it, okay? Ha, 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 ha.